All right, we are working on our proving ground, and to do that, we are trying to improve our creature before we move it into our landscape. So what do I do to do that? I open up PhotoP because I want to do this with freeware. I close any extra programs I don't need open, so I have a lot of processing. And then I take my PSD file that's properly named, drag it into PhotoP, and that way it will save to that location. So where I left off, I was using clone stamp. A clone stamp layer to smooth certain edges and transition them. I will continue that to remind you this is on a separate layer and clone stamp tool is set to be so sampled in its source from all layers. I also am using a tablet, so I want to press it to be pressure sensitive. I want its blend mode to be normal. I want the brush size to be large and the hardness to be soft. And I'm going to take it at a low opacity, around 40%. And to use this tool, I hold down Option. Come on. And it'll get these little crosshairs. And I steal from somewhere. And it will copy, stamp that texture directly on top at the softness and opacity of my choosing. Now if I do this too much, it gets really, really soft. But it's a great way to transition and soften, especially soft textures like fur. And I can make this a little bit smaller. And every time I want to change where it's sampling from, I just hold down Option again. Now I like to do it all on its own layer, like I got rid of the ear there this way, because then I can very easily erase away from the clone stamp layer. I'm not doing anything destructive. I can also do things like add softness and fur texture to the side of the face here in order to kind of cut out later. So I'm kind of building up opacity in this way. What happens if you clone stamp from empty pixels? Well, nothing happens. Right? So there needs to be pixels that you're copying from. And notice that I have my background layer turned off for this because otherwise it would steal gray pixels as well. So clone stamp is a great way to kind of work over everything at the end and treat it all as one. See. Oh, I'm on the wrong layer. Bummer. That's why it wasn't doing much. Okay, so now I've kind of fuzzed all that out. Instead of then cutting away from my clone stamp layer, I can just play with the opacity of it. I can dodge and burn it. I can do all kinds of things. So now I've got all this kind of transition. It's kind of nice. I'm shortening some of these whiskers by doing this, which is helpful too. Okay, now I can go in and use my dodge and burn tools. I'm going to use burn first. Midtones, again, exposure less than 20, pressure sensitive. Mid-tones only, soft-edged eraser, fairly large, or soft-edged brush, fairly large. And I'm going to burn on my clone stamp layer. Just the mid-tones. 
then if I want, I can burn just the shadows ever so slightly in certain places where I need them to go darker. But I gotta be careful of edges. And I can use my sharpen if it's too blurry. And kind of bring definition back. This is all on a separate layer. So basically textures I'm inventing from cloning different samples, right? Big change. Now I can actually erase away from it. So I'm going to use a 100% brush, soft edged, and start biting away just from the clone stamp. Just a little bit. This is where I accidentally went on the wrong layer. So I got to erase away from that layer, unfortunately. Just a little bit. So it's amazing how much control we have when we know what the tools do and how we can best use them. I did a lot on that layer that I didn't mean to do. Okay, so let's say that this is my creature. Now with that clone stamp layer, I think there's one adjustment I want to make still to transition it here. I'm gonna do it with a lower opacity. Whoops. Well, maybe not. Yeah, because it's so bright underneath. I think I just want to keep it. So I might even burn it some more. There, not, not that much though. Midtones only. Maybe highlights. But always start with midtones. Then erase away a little bit here. There we go. Transition it. So is it perfect? No, not at all. But it's better. It's better than where I started. Last step to clean up your creature is we're going to click on the, the topmost visible layer, hold down option, and then go to layer, merge down. I had this problem before with, how did I solve it? Let's see. Um, I'm going to go ahead and select everything <laughs> that's visible. And then I'm going to say option, layer. Yeah, there we go. You have to select them first in Photo Peak. So instead of merge down, you're going to hold down option and you're going to say merge layers. And what that's going to do is it's going to make a copy of everything merged, but it won't destroy your individual layers underneath. So now I just turn those layers off. And you see it's all combined into one layer now. What does that allow me to do? It allows me to do an overall levels on it. And to do this, I like to turn on the gray background. Because that helps. So this is just the, the finishing off. Make this a little bit bigger. So image adjustments, start with levels. Start with the midtones. Do I want to push them overall lighter or overall darker? Just for general lighting. Maybe just there. Do I want to limit highlights? Maybe a tiny bit. Do I want to limit shadows? No, I don't think so. Okay, next. And I can go back in my history to see if that makes a, a difference I like. Then image adjustment, color balance. 
treating the whole thing all in one place. Start with the mid-tones. Do I want it more green or more magenta? Do I want it more red or more cyan? And again, you can type in values if you have trouble with these sliders. Do I want it more blue or more yellow? And then highlights, I tend to warm up. A little bit of red, a little bit of yellow. And then shadows, I tend to cool down. A little bit of cyan, a little bit of blue. Again, subtle differences, but it gives you control of the whole thing. Then I can go to image adjustment hue saturation, but we probably won't need this. But maybe I just shift everything a little bit towards one direction or the other. If anything, I'm going to go in that direction. And then I can play with its overall. This is like the sponge tool, but for everything. The overall saturation. Should it be more intense or less intense? I'm going to take it down just a little bit. Then I can dodge and burn the entire thing. So I'm going to actually dodge or burn rather the midtones to separate this tail a little bit more from that back end to kind of make this anatomy make sense. To burn this edge going underneath in the arms, the cast shadows. And then maybe I dodge a little bit to help transition these back feet, which I didn't get to work on very long. 0% hardness, less than 50%, less than 20% exposure, large brush, soft edged. Don't overdo it. Okay, then this also shows me any debris that's left on the outside edges. So I can take my magic wand with contiguous checked. Oops, deselect. Select the empty space around it. Right now it's got a 15 pixel feather. I don't want that. I want like a 1.8 pixel feather. It rounds up to two. Deselect, now with a two pixel feather. I want to select around and I can see where there's stuff. And if I hit delete with that feather, it will start to bite away. So I think I do need a little bit more. Let's try an eight pixel. Come on, there we go. And I can use my lasso now, hold down shift. I can add to this because it's getting other stuff. It's a little blurry. I can add to the selection to erase away. I want it a little blurry, but I don't want that much debris kind of coming off of it. Same thing here, add to it, kind of cut it out from all that new content I built with my clone snap and then merge together. You just don't want any of those artifacts because those will come into your landscape with you. So you want clean, these are called assets. You want clean layer assets. Now I hit delete. And now that's all softly cut out. And if I did it a little too much or not enough, I can just always just go in with my eraser at 100% and take it down. Where it looks a little artificial, I use my eraser, use it soft edged, He's a little bit bigger. I'm using my tablet and I kind of bite away at it slightly. Then I can take my opacity way down and just take the edge off just a little bit. So it doesn't feel so flat. I can dodge and burn it. You know, you can just keep going re refining these forever. But that's a lot better. Okay, any kind of last clone stamping you might want to do? It's good to do it 
on its own layer, but you can also do it if you don't mind destroying it. Like I want to get rid of this little highlight. 